Okay, there you go. Oh man, hey. <laughs> I, I took a you know I took my my I shouldn't say morning walk anymore because because I don't I don't have the dogs so I walk out a little bit later but it's Sunday, and there were out people there was a there was a huge 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 voting line around two blocks I mean whatever you know, uh, so I bet. yeah. Uh, but that's not what's up. What's up is I'm back to um back. It's because it's chilly out. I'm back to drinking tea <laughs> when, I, when I talk oh, to you. Oh really? Yeah. I'm this is the last throat coat I have. I gotta go get the one that get the one that you said the other one, the, the real one. Slippery elm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the slippery elm one. Yeah. I gotta. I guess when I go, go look for it, I will probably forget again. Cause I'm a yeah. old. Cause I'm an old man. I forget stuff. So I have to call. Have <laughs> 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 some because next time I talk to you, I'll be in Virginia because, you know, I'll be there ready to vote. I still haven't, um, I have to still uh, download what the ballot's going to look like to find out how, you know, what I'm going to, you know, how I'm going to vote, whatever have you, you know. Talk yeah, I'm that. on Ballotpedia right now. That, yeah. Yeah. I, I look there, but I, that's confusing to me. I'm just going to go to my, go to my local down there. I'm going to go to some local something, you know, Democrat, Republic, whatever. They, they got the things there. Cause you know, I have the car, so I'll jump in the car and I'll just go there. I try to do that. I get there on Thursday, I think. I get out on Thursday. I cut out on Friday. I try to find some local thing, yeah. and, and and talk to them. I like to talk to peoples. You know, your 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 people on these uh, you know, modern devices, smartphones and stuff like that. Eh, that don't appeal to me. You know, <laughs> give me a person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like people. <laughs> Yeah, y'all say you like people, but huh, where's the evidence? Remember, I'm the one, I'm the oh, one, that, the <laughs> I'm the one that talked to a Tea Party when I was in Missouri. Talked to a Trump, a, a, a Duff man when I was in Missouri. So, oh yeah, know, I enjoyed those conversations. I did too, you know. And here's yeah. the in interesting thing because I actually think the way this world is going, what actually is going to happen if you you better make friends with your neighbors, no matter who they are, uh, because yeah. Uh, because you know, you, you know, people in. Let me put this: people in. If you don't have a, if you don't have a huge garden, some place to grow food or something like that, you're gonna be in serious trouble. Because these these yeah. these, these rich people ain't joking, you know, yeah. I mean, like that. I mean, I, I'm, 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 when I go down, when one thing I'm gonna do when I go down to Virginia, I'm gonna apply for food stamps for a SNAP program, you know. Okay. Because I'm an old man, you know. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a veteran and I'm a bunch of other things, you know? So I'm going to start. So when I was here, when I went to the VA here, I asked them about something. They, they went and gave me a a booklet, a big old booklet. Neighbor, the Manhattan. This is just Manhattan. And when I say booklet, I mean, if I get a map here, yeah. This, how many pages is this? 47, 48, 51. 50, 55 pages of information and most of the pages at least 45 of the pages are like with all the food pantries and, and you know people that had them what days they had the soup kitchens and stuff like that senior yeah. meals and all the rest of this stuff and this is just Manhattan so I assume that this is a lot of stuff you know a lot of people are going to be dependent on this in you little urban areas I mean, they're going to have problems man it's going to be problems yeah, it could be, yeah. Which is why I want to get back to South Africa, because we got land, we got food, and we grow food. I can find my, one of my initiatives, the guys are growing food now, even as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, what can I say? Well, anyway, so what's on your mind this week, man? Yeah, I've been seeing my neighbors, man. They're planting something. Hey, hey yeah. you better learn. And here's the thing. Remember, see, farming is not, that's not really farming, I guess, you'll be a garden, but it's still not that easy. You got to go by the weather. You got to figure out the, the moon cycles. You oh, just... trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, what, 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 just the... me trying to deal with my grass all summer. It's <laughs> like, yo, man, this this used to be much easier when I was younger. I don't know now. It's like, um, you know, with the weather cycles, like you said, with stuff happening with the weather and stuff, and yeah, the moon cycles. I mean, even just growing grass. <laughs> It's not easy anymore. Hey, look, man. The other thing is that you know, uh, you know. Plus, you got because of the climate change, if you want to call it whatever you want to call it. 
um, you know, you got different kinds of uh, um, you know insects coming up in this area. They ain't been here before. That kind yeah, of thing. trust me. You, you know, listen, we had planted some flowers, right, and some flower beds in front of the crib. Mm -hmm. And when I went to water and stuff, you know, that's when the bugs come out. Yeah, man, there was some sort of blue bug that I had never seen before. <laughs> just flew past me. I don't know if it was a wasp or part wasp and part morph. I don't know what it was. It was like a couple, and I was like, yo, this, okay, this stuff is happening. And I remember when I used to work um, on uh, the J line. So mm -hmm. that's like the old, like the Jamaica Avenue L. Yeah. When they used to have an L up there, you know, yeah, yeah. the elevated line there. Mm -hmm. And they took it down, you know, they took it down over by, um, you know, the end of the line by like Parsons and Archer and, and um, uh, something in Archer where you get the Long Island Railroad over there. Yeah, yeah. But then the rest of it is still the L. Mm -hmm. So it's like the J and I think it's the Z. So they just, they come out of the tunnel and they go straight, you know, on the, on the L part of it, right? Mm-hmm. So I was working on one of those stations out there, right? So now that area there used to be like, you know, mostly like, um, you know, working class whites and stuff. But now it's like predominantly like a mixture of like Hispanic, uh, Indian, maybe Arab. And, you know, you still got some whites still straggling there and, you know, some blacks there and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like a mixture now, right? But you can see the neighborhood's changing. But it used to be like, like 100% white. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, the bugs that are over in that area, man. I took took a picture of a couple of them. I was like, yo, I gotta look up these species, man, because there was some species over there. Mm. I mean, some serious species of bugs it was crazy. But the the problem really is going to be, you're not going to be able to feed the amount of people that need, especially the way well, I guess Americans will change it, the, the amount of, the amount of food that we eat. You know, yeah. that, that kind of thing is what we're used to. And and then and the problem with these food pantries and stuff like that, that they're not giving you the kind of food that you you know that you need. <laughs> Yo, funny you should say that, right? My neighbor came knocking on my door yesterday, right? He brought this box of food. Really? And it had you know the, the card in it with with the dump man's signature on it and stuff, mm -hmm. which immediately my wife walled up and threw that in the garbage, right? I didn't ask for this food and stuff. He just said, like, look, man, I'm just, you know, delivering this to you, man, because I got too much, blah, 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 right? And he wanted to give some to another brother that lived across from me, right? Uh -huh. So he had COVID, too. Who had he COVID? He had COVID, yeah. With the guy that was giving you the food? Or the, or the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. It was funny, too, because, like, he was masked up, right? But I didn't have a mask when I answered the door, because I was like, I'm, I'm behind the glass. So I was going to stay behind the glass, right? You know, like they do in the debate, stay behind the glass, yeah. right? <laughs> so when um, I went to, when he put the box down, he stepped down off the stoop, and he stood all the way by, like he was like, talk about six feet, he was like 12 feet away. <laughs> hey, once you survive something, you get super sensitive, you know? Word, man, that's what I'm saying. And, and I'm like, yo, I know I know this brother definitely went through because he told me, but you can just tell by his body language, like, yeah, this was real. It was real. And I think he was in, um, I think his profession, you know, prior to his retirement was like nursing or something like that. So, you know, he had already worked in hospitals and stuff, you know, so he, knew, he you know, he knows how the hospitals work. So, you know, the system and he had a firsthand experience with it. So I know it was really real for him. Hey, but then uh, we get to the box, right? So the yeah. box had like a big jug of like 2% milk, right? A container. Yeah another small quart container of like half and half two things of like uh, sour cream um, some potatoes Not some bad. onions Not bad. like some sort of freeze you know like flash frozen um, chicken legs Not good. like vacuum sealed right Yeah. and um, what else I think of cheese you know they gotta eat cheese oh no <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's that's that, that's that's the welfare food days, man. Come on, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, you got to eat the government cheese, you know. Yeah, good. But, but it had a brand on it, though. You know, and I think it was sliced. Even though I'm not a cheese guy like that anyway. Yeah, but, but the, the sliced cheese, like, that's not cheese. That's, that's pasteurized, whatever, you know, with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That pasteurized, processed, you know, orangey, you know, yeah. goo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sliced into squares. <laughs> so I was like, wow. So 
this is what this is he? so you know I looked at him so I was like alright cool you know I appreciate what he gave but but I was like I ain't drinking this milk I ain't drinking that I don't, I don't drink that as a matter of fact um, one of the things I wanted to say to you was that I was at Trader Joe's oh. a day before yeah so I'm going up and down the aisles looking for my stuff and everything and I was looking for my um lemon echinacea um it's a uh, lemon ginger echinacea yeah the juice in the bottle. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. So they had it. I couldn't find it at first. I was like, "There it is! I found yeah. it!" Any clear, any <laughs> any clear juice is good. Any clear juice is good, really. Yeah. So then I looked immediately to um, the right, no, the left of it, and I saw something, and it said, "Chocolate almond mm. cashew Bever- beverage." <laughs> so I took a picture of. I forgot to send it to you before we talked. So. Next to it, they probably had the macadamia thing too, you know? Yeah. These so berries. then, when I looked at that, I was like, oh, that's Anthony's drink right there. So I took a picture of it, but then all of a sudden, like there was a glow, and something was, uh, <laughs> right next to it. And it was blueberry, uh, lavender, uh-huh. honey. And I was like, yeah. That's what you need. Chocolate is his. The well, blueberry. blueberry lavender almond. Yeah. That's for me. No, the blueberry is really good. Blueberry is always good for you. It's got to make sure it's not flavored, you know. I, I, I suspect when they say say beverage, so, you know. Yeah. What, what so I, you took it, I took it home, but I haven't tried it yet. Hmm. So, yeah, so I got it. Well, you got to report next week to me and see, yeah, exactly. see, what, yeah, see what it is. Yeah, exactly. I got to give you a review. You know. Yep. Because, you know, down in Virginia, we have a good we have a good Trader Joe's down there, too. Like I said, I yeah. have transportation, so I can go anytime. Down yeah. there, you know. I usually like to just wait and go with my sister because it's always fun to shop with my sister, you know. So, oh, yeah? Yeah, I like shopping with my sister. Yeah. yeah. You know, she, 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 she and, and the funny thing is that when I shop for food, I take my time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really take my time. If I shop for clothes, it's like, throw it in, let's go, let's go, let's go. But if I shop for food, I take my time. You know, food and records and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so it's like a weird thing, you know what I mean? Because she wants me to go through the aisles and get through it. I, I'm, I'm, I look at everything. I'd be reading labels, you know. I really... oh, well, you're like me. You're like me. That's how my wife is, you know. You're supposed to be like, come on, let's just go. You know, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, you know, I just look, grab, you know, if it's something I'm interested, I'm grabbing it anyway. So it ain't even on the list of things to get. It's like, oh, I see something I like. I just want to try. I want to try new things. It's a new thing. I read the label yeah. and say, oh, it's nothing going to exactly. harm me. Let me try don't this. Let me go, don't let me go by myself. That's it. I'm all over the place. Hey. In fact, where we go, they have this, like, robot, right? You, have you seen the robot? No. Yeah, they got this robot, this racist robot now, right? <laughs> Wait a second. How do you know the robot's racist? What, what, what do you mean, it's racist robot? He got these big googly eyes with a smile on his face, right? And he's supposed to detect spills along the place. Uh-huh. But he be following me, though. <laughs> what? What? I'm taking pictures with him and stuff. You know, I'm sort of like got in his way to see if he goes around me and stuff. But I'm telling you, every time I'm in the store, you know, he find me in the store. One time I was coming out of the bathroom, and there he was. <laughs> Damn. How do you know it's a he, man? Maybe it's a female robot in love with you, man. Nope, nope. By the smile, on, by the look on his face and stuff, he's like. Yo, what's up? I ain't following you. <laughs> like a big grin on his face. I ain't he following you. He undercover, man. He's yeah, like... but I see you, though. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, I ain't seen that yet, man. I'm, I'm, I... Yeah, I'm going to send you a picture. I'm going to send you a picture. Mm. I, even, I, I even took some video, too. You know, I, wow. I've been all over it, man. Yeah, that's you right. You, you, on your Instagram, you only post you only post real pictures. You don't be posting stuff, other stuff. So it's all right. Nah, 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 nah. No, that's Maybe good. one day. Maybe no. one day I'll start doing. No, that. no, 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 no. Do what you need to do, but you gotta, you gotta stay true. You know what I think about my Instagram. Oh yeah, well, I told you my goal is a thousand. Yeah, yeah, okay. thousand posts. Yeah. Then I might, you know, I might uh, branch off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, maybe on my last post, I'll like to show like some sort of TV static or something like that. Oh, like okay. the show's over. You know, you know what I just thought about today. I said, you know, I'll be traveling, and not so much when I leave the country, but like when I come back into the country. They're going to yeah. ask me, let me see your Instagram or something like that. See what I be posting. Yeah. So what I'm thinking, I say, okay, what I'm going to do next time I come into the country, if they take a phone or whatever it is, I'm going to just delete the Instagram, you know, uh, uh, app from the phone. They want to get back in the phone, get back, get back in the country. Then I just reactivate it. 
you know. You yeah, get, yeah, yeah. You gotta get around that kind of stuff. You don't want them, you know, in your business. Why do they want to see Instagram though? Like, I don't know. Like the law or something? I don't know. No, no. You know, here, here, here. When they stop, they stop you. They be going to. They want. They want to see your phone. Um, I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about you. You know, I'm talking about. Um, you know, when you have a suspect, they could be going oh, okay, through your yeah, your, yeah, your, yeah, your, okay. your your what do you call that? Your um, what your social media. You know. Yeah. I mean, I actually yeah. don't care. You know, because you know. I say what I say. What else am I going to do? I cannot be myself. I've been, exactly. this, I've okay. been this way. <laughs> but you know, we go with, with yeah, and, you, and you always let them know who you are. <laughs> now here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing. I've always been. I've always like I do CCs to people that shouldn't even get CCs. I let people know exactly who I am. I've always been that way. So when they say, no, yeah. don't don't put that out, don't write that. I said, no, I'm writing this. This is all right. Whatever I write, I feel like I say, what? You know, well, yeah. I would stop being me. If if I truly am an evolutionary revolution of whatever, I'm, whatever they think I am, then well, how am I going to stop being that? <laughs> I've been this exactly. way since I was a kid, man. <laughs> I was causing... Yeah. I, in fact, I said some... some there were two jokes when I, in the teenage when I had there was one joke when I was a teenager they said you know with black revolution and stuff like that you know there's one brother we do not want locked up you do not know they don't want locked up you don't want to lock Sloan up it's not a good idea you know what I mean that gives him time to write and think no you just don't keep him out you know that was one joke then the other one which is even sort of weirdly more strange is that um I, I would never. I don't. I don't hide anything. Like people will be saying, you know, you gotta go, you know, mask it or something like that. I'd be right up front, boom, you know, whatever it is, yeah. boom. I think this comes from that. That here's this Malcolm thing that this guy came to New York looking for, you know, because old friend of Malcolm's comes to New York. He said, "Wow, I don't have this. How am I gonna find him?" So he looks. Up, he looks in the phone book. You know, when they had the white pages, look in the phone book, and there he is, right there, Malcolm X. You know, whatever Queens, where we live. And say, so calls him up. It's the number. Malcolm answers. He says, Malcolm, what, what, I, I didn't have your phone number, but I see you're in the phone book. Aren't you afraid that people might, you know, you know, get to you? He says, Oh no, 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 no. He says the government knows where I am. It's people like you. I need to, <laughs> to find out where I am. You know, <laughs> old friends. That's what it is. And I've always had that attitude. It's like, you know, come on now. You know, you don't need to stop this nonsense. You know, if they want to get you. If people want to get you. Will get you. Don't be paranoid. Okay. They already know. You know, hmm. like even for years, like how you talk about me being in tech. Hmm. For so many years, there's so many people I knew in tech. I ain't doing that. I'm not doing this. You know, I was like, yo, man, all you got to do is, you know, you can do your bills online. I ain't doing that. <laughs> the government, I'm like, they already know. You know, or, or I'll be like, um, I ain't trying those apps. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, come on, man. They already know. Here's well, the funny I'm not thing. going online because this way, you know, they'll be able to track. I'm like, they already track you. It's like, first of all, most of the people that said that to me and stuff were like black or brown people. I'm like, yeah. nobody know who you are. <laughs> No, here's the cases don't even care who you are. Here's yeah. a big here's a big thing. People with laptop and stuff like that, they try to they cover up the camera, you know. Yeah. And I'm going I'm going like, don't you understand? There are billions of laptops. Believe me, nobody is spying on you through your laptop. If they yeah. want you, they, they, they not only can they get you through your laptop, if they, if you if you're the person, if you are that important, they have other ways to be looking at you. Not through yeah. your laptop, not through your smart T V the people put yeah. tape over the small TV and say, "Do you do you think that big? Do you think there's somebody in some alphabet agency looking through all the billions of, of TVs to find what your dumbass is doing? Come on now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're not doing nothing, you know? Wow, you know? Oh yeah, they're gonna see your breast disease. Oh sure, okay, fine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, you know, it's pretty. Yeah, one time I did think that uh, my uh, cable box, right? <laughs> My cable box, like the light just came on, like with the numbers and stuff, mm -hmm. right uh, at certain times of the night. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the hell? Is I said, yeah. So I put like something in front of it. <laughs> with like Rosa woke up. You know, at the time I was retired and she was going to work. And she's like, why is there something in front of the, the cable blocking? Like, you know, time. I can't see the time in the morning. I'm like, oh. I said, yeah. I said, all of a sudden it just lit up and stuff like that. I'm like, nah, man. I don't like nobody looking at me when I'm sleeping. <laughs> so, yeah, but you know the phone. The, I always, you know. No, no, let me finish. Let me finish. So yeah. we switched out the box, right? 
because like they had a DVR and we were like, we don't need the DVR. Man. We just want to save some money. So we, we sent that back and then we traded out my son's DVR, right? And put his in there. I mean, his, not DVR, but his cable box was not a DVR. Right. And all of a sudden that one was doing it. So then I asked him, I said, yo, does the light come on sometime in the middle of the night? He goes, yeah. I said, this has been happening for years. You didn't tell me? He's like, yeah. <laughs> Been spied on for years, but you know I would. You know I'm a cine, you know I'm a cinephile. You know I've been watching films you know, like literally all my life, yeah. but but I realize that a lot of the stuff that happens in films they tell you years in advance. I of play, course, that's what I do. I always do the predict the program and stuff. Always, always, always. And like, I get, I give you two examples. One when that Roy Scheider film came out with the with the helicopter, you know, yeah, it was the first. It was it's notable because it was the first time that was HBO was mentioned on on in a film, right? Yeah. But, but the helicopter, a uh, Blue Thunder, that's what it was. The helicopter, yeah, they had, yeah. the, the, the camera could see where it could see. I said, oh, and, and it was a silent helicopter. I said, oh, now if they got that in the movies, that means they exist in real life. But the other one was even more severe was when Spielberg did E.T. Yeah. And they were going through the neighborhoods and you could see through the houses, you could see the shadows and hear, and hear everything. Yeah. And I said, oh, if they if they put that in the movies, you know they got that in real life. So yeah, yeah, there's no one even. And the same thing with, with stuff that I, I thought about that with uh, the stuff that they do too. And the same thing or, with it with Erasure, with, with the Schwarzenegger film, uh, with yeah. Erasure and 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 and, and, and Miss America, you know, you know, Miss, you know, I guess she's not Miss Black America, Miss America, you know, that, that was talking about with um, um yeah, Miss America, um, you know, the, the Williams. yeah, that's right, you know, the the one with the with the with the with the Black leather and a ball in the mouth and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 That classic penthouse. <laughs> hey, it was. Hey, you know, some. I feel sorry for people who didn't really, who who just are born now. They missed all the seventies and the eighties. I Man, the eighties was really. Eighties yeah. was interesting. Hey, eighties. Eighties. Eighties was great. If you wasn't on crack, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> but see, one thing like you know of the eighties, I didn't like because like you all had a better decade before in the 70s than we did in the 80s, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, no, we did, yeah. You, you could tell by the I music. sexually. Oh, yeah. Because of AIDS. You know, AIDS was like, oh, HIV, well, before, during the 80s, it was just called AIDS. It wasn't even called no HIV. Yeah. Until, like, you know, maybe 1989, they started calling it that, but in, in the early 80s, it was just called AIDS. Yeah. So, like, AIDS had everybody, like, you know. Before that, it was something else. I forgot what they called before then, but it was something else, you know. It's the uh, yeah. name, you know, uh, but look, uh, that's a down. I don't want to talk about that, man. Look, <laughs> yeah, it is a down. <laughs> but no, tell me something positive. First of all, I've been having uh, you, 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 you've awakened out of waking. I don't know how to say it, but me commenting on your film, on your, on your art pieces, has opened up a new genre of expression for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know this. <laughs> because now, I, because since it's art, I realize since it's art. You can't really say nothing that's wrong. It was like, it's like, you know, it's like when I when I took Capoeira, you know, you know, so I can't sing, you know what I mean? But you know, if I played yeah. played a band about, but you know, we have to sing these songs. But the thing about the, the band, you know, the bandetta they call, you know, you have you know you have the 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 the, the, um, the all the bows and the, and the and the and and the drums and whatever and the tambourine. But you know, I, my my bow I always had had the what call the viola, the the one that that you just. Can, you don't have to keep the beat nothing like that because right. you know I, I, I'm one of those people you couldn't make me the drum of your band because I at some particular point I said I don't want to do this I mean I know I'd be going up duh, 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 duh. I'd mess up the whole thing right <laughs> and plus I can't sing but the thing is that's what's good about church and, and like it like a couple when you sing is because nobody can criticize you they can't tell you you're wrong because you know right. you're in the faith or whatever you're in the you're in the thing so with, with the art thing you know I can say whatever I want. Somebody else can come back and say, "That's what's he talking about? That don't even make no sense. It don't have to make sense to you." At the time, the impression that I got of the impression was this impression. <laughs> you get your own impression. So I really, I really am enjoying this process. You know, it's, it's getting me to actually thinking. It's very interesting. You know, how come people don't comment? I, I don't, I, I don't see a lot of comments. Yeah, I, I get some people comment every once in a while, but like, it's interesting because. You know, just like with what you've been doing, I have my own little crew. <laughs> you know, and we kind of support each other, so to speak. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
to like the ones that usually comment that make the comments and stuff they're doing abstract art themselves oh yeah okay some of them even doing it digitally like i am so it's like we're the only ones talking to each other you know it's like our own little community that grew organically that's we supposed to have yeah 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 which i'm cool with you know it's like yo so those are the ones that i really talk to i mean if somebody else outside of that i'll talk to and then usually this is how new people come in they'll come in and they'll comment on your work and you'll respond the next thing you know um they'll follow you and then i'll follow them and then i'll start hitting up on some of their stuff mm. and then i may comment on one or two pieces next thing you know they're in the family mm. yeah and the, the comments also interesting especially if you answer if you're not really trolling you know what i mean see i don't yeah. get i don't get trolls because i will actually answer a troll but well, I will answer a troll in such a, you know, high-minded area. They said, this person is not worth trolling. You know, they're not getting a yeah. rise out of me, you know. But I've met, I'm not met, but I've, it's come to, it's like I had one just today when I, when I did, I'm starting to get more severe with, as the election comes closer when I'm talking to, 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 uh, to Trump or Biden and, or Kamala, you know what I mean? And I'm going to, yeah. in fact, I got to do one on Biden tomorrow morning that's going to be devastating. I got to warn people or something like that. Well, like, <laughs> like this... But the one I did this morning, I think, uh, when I mentioned I'm listening to, uh, you know, the Prince cut the war. Nobody knows that cut because yeah. you know it came out on it came out on the MPG people. You know, nobody knows it. You know, yeah, and, yeah. And and uh, so somebody wrote back Prince that like you know, and then I then I said, listen to the thing. You know, uh, I said, well, you know, you really should listen to it like that. And the yeah. guy went back and actually listened to it. You know, no, I said I said I gave you a hint about Gil Scott Heron. You know, but you should listen to it. So he went and listened to Gil Scott Heron. Said, "Oh, I really like that the Gil Scott Heron, blah 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 blah, like that." So it was kind of interesting. Yeah. But that also brings up another point. This is super interesting to me. I keep on saying to people, no one is. Everybody thinks they own something. Like they're the first person to do this, or they 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 the, I did this first, whatever have you. I try to explain to people, it, it's, it's, it's what I call the epoch. You in a certain epoch. It's, it's yeah. like the ether. And so every there's a lot of people. That little nose of pepper at the same time will have your same idea because it's like really in the ether, it's in the air, you know? Yeah. So now, you know, Gil Scott Heron, when I, you know, I listened to to, to, to uh, Greg Carr, you know, Dr. Greg Carr with the, the Karen Carr thing uh, on, yeah. on the Karen weekend, Austin, right? Yeah. Now, he mentioned this week, he mentioned B Movie, you know? Yeah, he did. Now, now, if you look, if you paid attention to what I've been posting, about a wait in, in when I was in Missouri about a week ago, yeah, right, yeah, the, yeah, about a week more than a week ago. You I, mentioned it. Then. I mentioned B. I was listening to B movie. Now yeah. I could go and say, well, he he listened to my he listened to my thing. He got that B movie for me. Ah, get out of here. The thing is, it's evident. It's in the air. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the whole Absolutely. point. And so when stuff like that happens, for me, I don't go around thinking like, oh, I'm some sort of genius. I go around and say, ah. Everybody, everybody, you know, people are thinking they're, 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 they're getting this, they're getting this, they're getting this, which is sort of really disheartening about this whole voting thing, you know? Because, like, yeah. when I see all these lines out of the block, I almost want to say, people, people, man, don't you understand, man? You're, you're, first of all, voting is not voting is not what you think. You ain't changing nothing by no voting. You know, you switching up. But, you know, especially in New York, it's not going to make us, you know... <laughs> They, oh man, I, I I get so I'm not frustrated. I get so exhausted trying to say, y'all, especially when you say you have these athletes who ain't voted at all. It's the first time they're voting in their life, and yeah, they, like that. Yeah, they feel like they're doing something, and you go like, no, you you got to understand. You know, this is nothing. This is for me. It's I'm just having fun. I've always voted. Yeah. I'm a, I'm addicted to voting. I just like to vote. You yeah, know? me too. I just gotta have my say. <laughs> I don't even say I'm gonna have my say. I, did I, did I say it this morning? No, I said it someplace. I said, I forget where I put this at. But I, I, no, I wrote, I'm, somehow I was trying to say, you have to understand, it's called a polling place. You know? It's, yeah. it's, it's an accurate poll. You're not actually voting. Yes, you're voting, but you're voting and being counted in a poll. So what you're really supposed, what you're really doing is you're sending a signal. It's like it's like when they when they have, they have these exit polls or they project there's so much, so many people going to do this and blah blah so many people going to vote or whatever have you. Well, when you actually go and vote, that's the actual real poll. That's the historic poll. You see, the most accurate poll. Yeah. Now, the trick is, voting is not is a voting booth. But when I 
it, 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 I'm sorry, let me go back. But it really makes it may, when you understand when all these people say, "Well, if you don't vote, it don't count," or, or, if, or if you write in, you know, you're really voting for Trump. Or what, you know, what do you mean if you write, you really vote for? Or if you don't, what, they say all these kind of tangential things. They say, "No, you're taking up. You're actually writing in a poll. If if they get a poll that says, you know, three percent of the people voted for Mickey Mouse, that's not wasting your vote. That's a poll." That means that three percent of the people that took the energy to come to that's like if you don't go to the polls, it's the same thing. You know, fifty percent of the people don't vote. Well that means something, you know? That's that's the thing. But if you actually vote and then you vote you vote and then you don't give the person a popular vote, that's even more. That that it's it's like a whole other thing. How do we used to do it in radio? There's this thing in radio that basically for every letter that's written that represents like, I don't know, twenty five people or or five hundred people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that person, exactly. that person that took the time to write the letter, that means there was like twenty five other people that didn't take the time, but they had the same thought. You know. Yeah. So when you go, when you go vote, basically you're just representing, you know, at least five more people or however many more people, and that's to me that's very important. That more importantly, that you just that down ballot stuff, and I think that people are finally getting that you can get rid of some of these judges and these and these and these sheriffs. That's where it comes in. You can get your school board, all the rest of that stuff. You can, well, that's not fair. You know, you, I think people it's starting to understand that. So I have to thank Trump for that. I have to, I have to do a special thing with him, thanking him. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Because, you know, the whole thing of voting, just that you have like a lot of these celebrities and athletes voting for the first time. Like you said, just a moment ago, that said something in a sense where that's a, a sample size of a lot of people voting for the first time, maybe in the last couple of elections. So then the whole thing about um, down-ballot voting is, like, to teach them, like, yo, it's just more than just the one on the top. Because, like, if you're voting for the first time, you're like, hey, I'm voting for president. I'm just going to click that thing, and then I don't know who all these other people are. And they just going to walk out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing that all those other people will affect you more directly than what you just voted for for president. And look, the other thing is that you have to understand, say, say in the, uh, I mean, just stay in New York because I, I voted for somebody, I mean, I, I used to vote in New York all the time. Yeah. Like I told you before, like it makes it, say if, say if you all of a sudden, you know, you, you, you hate Trump and you you think that Biden's going to be a savior. Well, you don't vote for Biden on a Democrat line, you vote for him on a working families line. That gives the working families some clout, you know? Yep, and, and I actually sent you um, the sample ballot from, for me. Oh, I just emailed it to you while we were talking from the very beginning, oh, so okay. you'll see that they have things like as far as um, let me just go look, go back to it here. Um, oh, okay. um, hey, I'm in front of Supreme Court, New York Supreme Court, eleventh judicial district, right? Uh huh. But then you got all these people, you know, incumbent, Republican, incumbent, Democrat, uh -huh. um, incumbent, Republican, blah blah blah, Democrat. Same thing, incumbent. Then you got someone Democrat, so they're not, you know, an incumbent. Then, like you said, they got um, Working Families Party. And see, me being someone that always voted mm -hmm. a lot of time for the Working Families Party because yeah. that was what my union also went with, too. Mm. You know, they would always say, you know, try and go for the Working Families and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, okay, let me see. Because, you know, I always thought that they were a little bit corrupt, too. So, Well, they are, no, no, Cuomo, Cuomo them took them over. But it's, uh, but it's all right. Go ahead. Yeah, what's what happened? Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, let me let me, just, let me just see what this is here. So I'm like, okay, yeah, Working Families Party, you know, what their mandate is, you know, what their MO, what they're about and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm for that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on this ballot, I see, you know, there's about one, two, three, four, five, six... And then there was another sister that I saw um, in the uh, where is she? I'm 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 I... in there too. And actually, oh here she is right here. She's one of them dead. Um, this woman here, a full author Mensa, I was able to look her up uh -huh. and read about what she's done and what where she's been before. Uh -huh. And then I even uh, showed a friend of mine, you know, even though he had already voted by mail. Mm -hmm. But he's like, okay, next time, next time, black, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to you, black man. I'm going <laughs> to listen to you. I said, all right, all right. Because I said, um, I mentioned um, someone that he should have voted for that mm -hmm. was like basically, I mean, literally dealing with his entire block. Uh. I, like, <laughs> I said, that's who you should be dealing with. That's who you should be following. Because she's, she's like dealing with your block directly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Man, I can't open your thing. You got Cloud Convert. What the heck you got here? What is this? Uh, I don't know. What is that? BP, BP Low. I, I pressed the download thing. Now I can't get nothing. What's going on? Is this B? What is it? Why can't you just say, what's this BP Convert? What the I don't heck? know what that is. I just sent an email. <laughs> no, I got you. I got your Gmail. I'm trust. I'm trying to look at it. in the Gmail. You got this attachment. No, no, but that's not in the Gmail. That came from iCloud. That's why. Oh, okay. so I, I click on your Gmail. Here's how it works. Whatever, whatever. Oh, I no, sample ballot. Yeah. President. Uh, so what am I supposed to do here? President. If US you scroll Con- down, you scroll down, right? Yeah. And then you got the president. Then you got the Congress. Then you got the um, state senate. And you got the assembly district, and you got the Queens County. Then you got the Supreme Court one, and that's where you see what I was talking about there. Where am I supposed to click on? Oh, I click on these people. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, so local ballot measures. So I click on yeah. it, and your local ballot measure. I see. We cover vote highlights. Okay, California. We get this one. They got all too many things, man. I gotta. I, I gotta. Re- when I get down to Virginia, I really concentrate. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you got to drill down at that point, you know. Yeah. Uh, U.S. Congress special. U.S. Congress but to special. Me, even with this, like you said, there's a little work involved. Yeah. But the thing is, they do that, in my opinion, so that, you know, you'd be like, I, I ain't got time for that. Yeah. Yeah, but this is. If you this, really this, want something done, you got to drill down and do it. Yeah. Mayor, state, state judges. See, that's what you want to ch- check on. But see, this is what. Well, anyway, yeah, 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 yeah you understand. Yeah. You know what's up? Oh man! Yeah. But see that they should make it a, you know, that's the other thing. Like they, like they'll say, like say for instance they're gonna make uh they they one of the things say say ice cubes one of the ice cubes thing is to have uh, Juneteenth as a holiday, right? Yeah. I would say no. We don't. We're not gonna call it a holiday. Juneteenth is a study day, and this is where we study. You know, yeah, we yeah. study slavery. You know, like like Ados had this thing, or you know, Yvette had this thing where every new immigrant, when they have to take some sort of test, you know, when they take the test to be an American citizen or whatever have you, right? Yeah. And part of that's supposed to be the history of of, of slavery, history of black people in the United States. You know, yeah. those are the kind of things. But I, I'm serious about this whole the Juneteenth thing. I really think that instead of saying a holiday where people just go up and shop, no, this is a study day. We're gonna call this study day. Oh yeah, to me that makes. Excellent sense because let's think about like okay, MLK Day, right? Mm-hmm. MLK Day, man, people be like, Yeah, I'm going to see the Knicks or you know, whatever sport that you know, whatever yeah. NBA game is going to be on around that time or something like that. They're just they're just going through the motions, you know, it's like a holiday, but it's like you know, they're not really thinking about you know, like when they're first when when we were first fighting for it. Well, when I say we, meaning just we as a people, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you well, have Steve, on your Stevie Wonder or, or black, you know, black owned stations or yeah. stations that catered to black people. Yeah. His speeches and stuff like that. Yeah. And all of that would be on on that day all day long. You couldn't yeah. get away from it. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You turn on the radio, it was the Martin Luther King speech and stuff like that. Yeah. Now it's it's like, oh well, holidays, you know. Yeah, they they, they, holidays, they play. I have you know, they play. I have the like, dream, and that's it. Cold. I'm going to Target. You know. You, know, they, 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 about that, you, you, you know? might you might hear a snippet of "I have a dream" and that's it. But what what yeah. interests me when when people are going for the for Martin Luther King, I say yeah. But the reason why I wanted it is because I knew that that Martin Luther King and Malcolm X were, were linked up together. If you talk about Martin, you had to talk about Malcolm. So yeah. I like the holiday because that would bring Malcolm into the consciousness. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, and I had this whole other thing that you know you basically Black history would go from. Martin Luther King Day through through um, uh, March, right? Yeah. All the way through April through May to Malcolm's birthday. That's the whole black history. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And then as soon as you got to May, then we get to June, that's, that's, that's Black Music Month. So basically, we go from January to June is black months, black black months, black days, whatever you do. Yeah, your holidays. Like half the year. That's it, man, you know. From January through June, you know, we get the first six months. That's what we're supposed to have. So, it's, it's, so that's that that's, that says something, I suppose. But but I think I'm very serious about that. If you're going to get a holiday, don't call it a holiday. Call it a study day. You know, yeah. it, these things matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I really I realize that. You know, well, I, I, not uh, what am I realizing? 
words, to me, words are always it. I try to come up with new terms all the time to describe something to make it more accurate, more pinpointy, you know? That's always yeah. see what happens, you know? Oh, man, this thing is making my... This tea is making me thirsty, man. I gotta go get some water. What's going on here? Huh. Yeah, I had my tea earlier. I had uh, some ginger with green tea. Like fresh ginger, green tea, and fresh lemon. Hmm. Yeah, I had some lemon in there. I should have put some... I should have squeezed some lemon in this thing. Oh, well, I'll learn next time. Who knows? I'm not going to be here next time. I'll be the uh, next time I talk to you, I'll be in Virginia. I'll call you from Yo, Virginia. Yo, have you, have you tried the um, Trader Joe's cough drops? They got like a cranberry one. Really? Yeah, it's good. Oh, I'll try it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying one right now. Cranberry is nice to me. Okay. I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. I might go to Trader Joe's before I leave again. I don't know. I, I like, it's, yeah. it's a nice walk down where I am because I'm, I'm here on 124th Street. And that's, I can walk the 90, like 92nd Street. And, uh, yes. you know, so it's a nice little walk there and back. So I do it as a morning you. walk. And I do you the do morning whole walk. Foods, don't you? you do Whole Foods, right? Yeah, there's a Whole Foods. There's a Whole Foods right here on 121st Street. I'm not really into Whole Foods that much, but, you know, I understand what you say. I, I go to, I, I got some, I got some spinach from there the other day. And, and I, and I, oh, I got some butter from there, you know, but yeah. I'm not really, Whole Foods is not really my thing, you know. Now, the reason why I was asking, because they, they put one out there, like near the Trader Joe's now. Oh yeah, the one on ninety second street. You know, ninety second is right there. And then next, like I think it's ninety fourth street or ninety fifth yeah. street. There's a there's a there's a whole food there. Yeah, I be, yeah and that's so the, that's a big one too. Like, nah, they too expensive. We ain't going over there. And I'm like, yeah. but you no. know, I be drawn. You know, like I'm sure there's something in there that's reasonable no, that I'm interested in that whole, I want to get. The whole so foods they have, there, but there wasn't open yet. The whole foods they, they have just hiring people down here. Then that that way I say, where's is that Nutman hat now? Uh, Amsterdam, whatever, whatever yeah. avenue it is, it's it's huge, it's huge, man. It's really yeah. big. It's got a lot of stuff. I got some. I gotta get some uh, zinc lozenges from someplace. I don't know where I'm gonna get them from. Let me get them from someplace. So I'll see what happens. Uh, once I, I'm gonna you ask you CVS. CVS is there. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not. I'm not oh, man, there's place, a brand called Zarbies. Who? Zar. Which is Z A R uh -huh. Bees, which is B W E S, Zar Bees. Really, and you get it from CVS? Yeah, they got a lot. They got a lot of Zar Bees products. Oh, okay. Like I get my um, my elderberry with zinc. Really? And um, you know, zinc vitamin C, you know, cough syrup or whatever, or just syrup. Well, CVS you know, is it's right like here. An immune support thing. It's I guess Zar Bees makes that. I guess CVS, CVS right here, on Twenty Fifth Street. And yeah, then, so I means, man, go yeah. for it. And okay. then, and then, um, they also have a nighttime one which has melatonin in it too. Has who in it? Melatonin. What do you mean, you got melatonin in it? Melatonin. It's a elderberry, yeah. with zinc, vitamin C, right? Yeah. And melatonin to help you sleep. Really? Yeah. Well, I so just... they got two of them. They got two. One is the regular immune support. The other one's the nighttime immune support. Really? Yeah. They're selling melatonin in tablets. My goodness. Huh. No, this isn't tablets. This is a cough syrup. It's like a, you know, you take a spoon or a little cough or whatever. Cough syrup? Oh, that's even worse. Cough syrup? Exactly. Oh, man, they got you going straight to the bloodstream, man. Hey, this is not good. My melatonin. goodness. Melatonin. You don't like melatonin? I don't know. I, I'm not really into it. <laughs> melatonin. Leave, leave, me, leave the stuff alone, man. I don't trust... I don't know. You know, sometimes we put the supplements in my doctor, the VA, they don't know nothing. They be saying, don't do this, don't do that, because they don't know nothing. You know what I mean? So I got I don't know who to listen to these days. I got to I gotta pay attention to I get to the, do the blood work, and then I go do oh, do whatever I need to do. So when they All check right, let me, my blood. Let me make you what melatonin is. Melatonin is a hormone primarily released by the pineal gland that yeah, regulates yeah, the sleep I know, I know what, cycle. I know, I, know what telling, I know what melatonin is. I know. Yeah. It's good, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what you mean by good. When I say that's my point, what's the taste? Is my point. You act like it's like the the, the, the taste is like something like out of this world. You know, it's like no, no, not I'm the having, taste. I'm talking about you know, you know it just allows you to just relax and chill. Well, I'm going down to Virginia. I think my my brother-in-law. I think he smokes herbs, so maybe I'll chill that way. Who knows? <laughs> If I need Jesus, to, I don't, I need to, I don't I, like that. That's what I'm saying. You if know, I need to relax, and, I guess, you know. You know, 
I ain't smoked herb in so long, man, so I don't know what the hell's going on with that, you know. Yeah. I was going to wait till my, I wanted to wait for New Year's. But I figured, here's what I, here's what I was figuring, here's my diabolical Philly figuring. I figured, like, okay, I'm going to Canada, but I'll be in Vancouver for New Year's Eve, and I, you know, I'm not getting high, not drinking, nothing like that, I'm pure as a driven snow. But then I'll be okay. in Vancouver, and marijuana is legal, they got the edibles and everything, so I say, hey, I'll have a good New Year's Eve. But now I can't get into Canada, because, you know, that's... We can't, people, Americans can't mask up because they're trying to be what, what do they call some herd immunity or whatever the heck they call this now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Americans herd got some immunity strange, don't work. You they, know what, man? They got some I strange, think funny, That's what I even call it, herd immunity. You just don't want to do it. That's all. <laughs> just tell the truth. <laughs> man, these folks, man, they're messing me up. I can't get back to my wife. I can't get... I can't get it get, get get to a country where I can take some edibles on New Year's Eve. What's going on, man? Gee. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Oh man, it's funny because um, you know, I'll be honest with you. You know, you know, other than like the whole COVID thing of people getting sick and dying, which I'm not with, mm-hmm. but you know the the sheltering in place, I was already doing that when I retired. <laughs> it's like I wasn't going nowhere. I think I already told you that. Yeah. But I was like, yo. Hey, to tell well, you I was too. like, I was, you know, kind of good with like, okay, you got to be inside. I'm already inside. You know, you can't do this. Okay, I'm over. I'm, I'm over here. You know, I'm doing my thing anyway. I'm a loner. I'm a loner. And look, I'm a. Lo- I've been a loner most of my life. It don't. In fact, I can be alone. I can be in a crowd. It don't matter to me. I'm hanging. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can hang anywhere. But the, actually, this was really good. Especially, especially I found out Missouri was wonderful because. To tell you the truth, man. It's nothing but white people where I, I was in, in Missouri, and to stay away from the white people. Where I don't have to converse with them. Talk about hold oh, oh your dog does this. No, you, you know how dog people are. They they, they really yeah. oh man it's terrible. So I didn't have to deal with any of that. Nyla, huh? Oh man, I didn't have to deal with any of this stuff. The white those all you know how white people get. You know they, especially they see a black person you know that's non threatening or they think it's non threatening. Then they really want to make friends. They want to talk to you and all that stuff. But with COVID, I didn't have to deal with them, man. Yeah, yeah. Psychologically, I'm I, I'm in a better space, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so, so. yeah, it's funny, you know. Like I was saying earlier about me going to the store, right? And uh, the robot following me, right? right? Yeah. Well, a lot of times when I'm in the store, man. The white people, they're like, they are like shook, like they just don't want to get a, you know, they got an attitude and stuff like that because it's almost like, oh, here you are invading this this store we know you don't live over here but you're shopping over here and you know i'm dealing with covid and stuff like that and i don't want to be around you anyway and stuff but then they got to because you're shopping and they're shopping and stuff like that but quite a few of them I, i've noticed that when you get near them mm. you know you're reaching for you know i don't know a box or whatever yeah and you hear them so they either like they either go one way or the other either they're like Oh, you know, after you, after you. Yeah. Or in some ways, they're like, you know, really pissed yeah. that, you know, you've invaded their space, That's which it. you really didn't. Right. But it's just that you invaded their place. That's it. But it's nothing they can... like, hey, I'm not invading nothing. It's like, I've been shopping. My thing is like, all of a sudden, they see you now, but I've been shopping there for years. Yeah. Like, for years. Yeah. That's the way it is. Also followed there for years too, yeah. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. Yeah. So look, man, what, what what else is happening? Tell me what's going on because uh. Yo, so I, I saw that thing that you had um mentioned in one of your stories about um Shannon, you know, talking to Cube. I watched that. That was good. That was really oh, really that good. was good. That was really real too. And then plus, you know, at least for me. I thought I was able to understand it even better than you because when they when Q started talking about his his um his history in music and, and television and stuff, you know, since he's from my generation and stuff like that, it's like mm-hmm. I understood exactly what he was talking about when he when he talked about how his rise, you know, in um mm-hmm. celebrity. Yep. yep. And I knew Shannon knew exactly because Shannon's around the same age too. Yep. Maybe young they're both younger than me, but I'm saying I, you know, I was around during that time. It's, it's the same, like, um, you know, involvement of, um, you know, Brother Black History. And then when they even mentioned how, like, yeah, man, I, you know, now I just like to listen to my Isley Brothers and stuff like that. That was another connection to, like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I get that, too, because that's our way to connect to you. You know what I'm saying? Yep. To you and the generation that came before. Yep. That even though, you know, not all the brothers from your generation, like um, 
really accept rap or hip hop or that type of culture and stuff, you know, versus, you know, the super group bands and the funk culture and all the other cultures before, mm. you know, but at least, you know, a lot of times you'll hear a lot of guys from, you know, the hip hop era will, will get, you know, pay homage or do respect, all do respect to the groups and everybody that came before them. Yeah, but Brother Cabo is on some some some, uh, some rap thing out uh, out in the West, or so you know Farrakhan, of course, they sample him all the time. Um, you know, there's, there's stuff that, that that happens. I would the same brother that wrote me about you said Prince, and I said that you know about the, the war that that cut. I said, but you know, I said most most artists are well established at some particular point. You do some sort of social political thing. I said, I remember one time I was I did a special on BAI. Oh no! I think it was police violence, something, some uh, black boy killing, you know, the regular stuff, and and I knew that Patti LaBelle had some sort of song, and I found it. It's called yeah. "Shoot 'Em On Sight." Yeah. And I think it's on. Is it in album? Not is it? Whatever the, the album cover. I, I see the album cover. Anyway, but now Patti LaBelle is not known for no social political thing, but that's a yeah. heavy record. So "Shoot 'Em On Sight," and I use yeah. that sucker, you know. The, you know so I'm just trying to say, and that's what I actually missed. What 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 I miss about the '70s, especially when I was started, when I when you know when we was doing uh, even even Saturday Soul, but especially when I was doing Variations of Blackness, you know, if you put out a record, you know, say the, the say the record had you know eight cuts on it, you know, what I mean, or say even twelve cuts, whatever, whatever, at least one or two would have some sort of social or political content in it. Then then they started putting out these rap records with like so you had sixteen cuts, and none of them said anything about anything, you know. That's what bothered me about rap most of the time, you know. Yeah, but that, but but that's not true though. You well, know, I, should, I should say later rap. Maybe I should say it that way. I, I know when you first when it first came, I know I, I understand the public getting. Look, remember I was there. No, 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 no. Back it up, back it up. Yeah, yeah. You keep always saying public enemy, but no, pre-public enemy. We talking mm. about Grandmaster Flash, Flash yes, like I, Rodney, yeah. um, I missed it. It's Flashpoint. I know. You understand, but not just not just Grandmaster Flash. Is what I'm saying. You talking about what the call the field is for. Yeah. There was so many guys that yeah. had like so, one this, wonders early on. I know the Sonics. The, 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 the Sonics. I understand. I know. I, I you know. I know the album. I I know Steve Van Zandt and all them put out. I understand that. Look, get look. Who put Smooth on the air? Damn it! What, what, how come nobody knows my history? You know. Yeah, but I'm just saying though. I know you put Smooth on the air, but even with Smooth, Smooth came after us. Yes, he did. That's true. Yeah, you know I'm saying so. Like. You know, when I say Smooth came out thus, meaning like, I yeah, know. he could talk about those groups and stuff, just like I could talk about the Ozzy Brothers and stuff. Yeah. But you were there. I know, I know. They were there. Yeah. You know, know what I'm saying? I, I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even mention Smooth. That's, when I think about it, that's right. Y'all, y'all the ones. You pre, you pre everybody. People, yeah. People don't know the power of Creative Unity. Creative Unity was a monster group, man. Just a monster concept, a monster, whatever we did. When we... We think about when we first started out. The first, what was that? The um, the first thing I think was not, not the night before Christmas. It was that thing. It was uh, I clearly remember it was the winter time. But you, somebody was doing Brian Gumbel. It was the first thing we ever did live before, before you, before we did um, uh, uh, um, oh man, the, the, our classic uh, Day of Absence. It was like the uh, like a week before, sometime before we did this special at night. Maybe it was one of the first Creative Unity things that went on the air. And it yeah, we did a Brian Gumble thing. Yeah. We did um um we did something about like something one of the pieces you did was called The Body Human. Yeah. Which had to do with um it had to do with who who did have to do it? All I know is a lot of stuff that we did had to do with like, you know, the Koch administration. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff with Donald Manis, stuff yeah. like that. Ronald Reagan. And of course, the, the classic piece that a lot of people forget is the Pitbull piece. Oh, the Pitbull. That's, that is too classic. That is like, man. That's what the Pitbull piece was like lightning in a bottle. Man, right. We literally did not really write that piece. Everybody just went into the meat locker and ad lib their yeah. whole pork part. That whole Geraldo Rivera thing was so funny. And the whole thing I'm saying, that whole night, first of all, the fact that we got together to do that mm. was happenstance. It's like, oh, we're all here. Let's just do this. So then all of a sudden it was like, okay, so then we kind of like drafted some sort of like summary of what we were going to do. But each time we went into the booth, it was like, just go. 
<laughs> it was like, go. I re- oh, you say, I remember. I remember because you played a Staffordshire or something like that. I said, well, I'm a Staffordshire. Yeah, Staffordshire yeah. <laughs> I said, I'd and die. I, you, I did that. I didn't even know what a Staffordshire <laughs> thing was. That, that was so funny because you sounded like so sophisticated. Like, look, I'm above all the rest of these people. Yeah. <laughs> I said, they told me, you have to be stuck up. So I said, all right. <laughs> man, I fell out, man. That, that that we gotta play those things, man. See again, let's let's go, let's 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 go. See, this is the trick. A lot of the stuff that Creative Unity did, if you took it now, right, and all yeah. you have to do is cartoon it up, and it would just yeah. be just as relevant. And you yeah. just have another like you can sell that. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, I'm working on the boys with that little by little, trying to get them to you know come together on that. Cartoon but, it know, up, we- man. Yeah, because we be talking and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I'm tired of talking. Let's just do this, man. Yeah, that's that. Well, that's always so, the problem. So I spend I spend the majority of my time, other than you know, trying to you know, re-educate myself and continue to learn about you know, you know, my history and my people and stuff. But I keep trying to like build up my skills, you know, especially with with the technology and stuff. Because I mean, even when um they did that South Park special that mm-hmm. just came out. Mm-hmm. They just brought all the equipment to everybody's houses, you know, with the social distancing and stuff. Nobody was in the booth there. You know, they didn't go to, like, um, a studio and do it. They all did it from their house. Well, that's how... They did all the mix and everything, everything together digitally. Well, you think that's, that's something? You think that, well, that's, that's how they did the, the guy that did the music for Tenet, the Johan's yeah. guy. He, he, the orchestra wasn't there. He had to bring, he had to do each and bring it all together. But that's the thing. Like, right now, David is working, you know, for, for Arisha Tales. He's, he's 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 trying to do, uh, a, 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 you know, some some Yoruba stuff, you know, as as uh, as this cartoon, just a one man thing, because of expenses and stuff like that. But it yeah. it would be so easy, man. It would be so easy just to take some of that stuff, and especially the classic ones, and just cartoon it up. It'd be so simple, yeah. you know. I mean, that's that's what I'm doing. One of the things, what I, like I said, when, even this conversation we having right now, you know, these conversations. Yeah. You know, all my all, all my rants or whatever have you, I could cartoon them up, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, not me. But, I, you know, I'll find it somehow. Somehow something will happen. I don't know. I got some other things I want to do. I got to I got to go. I'm, 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 I'm dedicating next year to my, my Henry, another Henry Duma year. I get to see, I'm going to see Loretta on, supposed to be tomorrow, but I'm going to see Loretta on Wednesday. And I just yes. talked to Craig Harris. I, I just thought of something that would be amazing. I yeah, Craig, I got to get Craig to do this. He had to twist his arm to do this one. This is like really, this is special, special. I could pull. I know exactly how to do it. I know exactly how to pull it off. I just got. I got to write. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write them this week. So maybe I might be able to do it as soon as as December when I come back through here. But I think it'll okay. probably be have to wait till next year. I'm not really sure. But if I have to stay, I don't know. But I gotta approach it. With this is like amazing. This is so such an amazing idea. Hey, sometimes I'm, this noggin is really thinking some really stuff, and I really got to do some more. I got to get back to my creative stuff. All this commentary and this and this ranting, this is cute, whatever have you, and inviting on people's writing things, that's cute too. But I need to do some other stuff, man. I, I, I need to get back into my my field, man. Yeah, you know, it's rough when the audio dramatist can't do his audio drama, and plus I'm not even in Africa. At least I was in Africa, I could do some audio drama, get my people's. Oh man. I'm jammed, man. <laughs> I need people to do audio drama. Yeah. <laughs> I'm jammed. But that's the thing. Um, with the audio drama, though, have you ever tried Anchor? Look, let, let me try to explain something to you. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I could be just like the, the like I said, the composer for, for Tenant, you know, the Black Panther composer, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You could do stuff like that. But the main thing about audio drama is the bringing of people together. I can tell you, each audio drama we did had consequences. It brought people together. I remember we was doing something, I forgot which one we were doing, but I had, I think it was, maybe it, maybe it was even Phantom Tobu. It was something like the Irish guys, maybe it wasn't, one of those things we were doing at, at, at the public theater, it had the Irish guy, Mick Dewan, and, 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 and what's name was over one there, and he was there with Zenzele, and I swear the way they were, they were acting, I said these two, these are two most radical, you know, you know, revolutionaries there ever was. And these two, these people are talking together. I don't know what I have wrought here. I don't know what's going on. But I have things that actually save people's lives. It has to be. It has to be. I 
I have to bring people together in a theater situation. That's all yeah. I can tell you. In fact, maybe it's a good time. Uh, at some particular point, I need to tell you the story anyway. It's going to be kind of long, but I'm sorry. But let me to tell you the story of um, of the long dream. Okay. Yeah, tell me that story. Okay. I'm going to tell you from the very from the beginning. Now, remember, we did that in. Uh, it must have been '88. Was it '88? Yeah. So, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, '88. Right. Okay. What happened was. And and we did it because we because we used BAI. Now remember all that time. Remember that's when Scagliati was there, and I was sort of banned. You know, I, was oh, I remember Scagliati. His name alone. I was, <laughs> I, I was I, there was John Simon Scagliati was sort of banned from. You know how that happened. I mean, I mean, let me tell you. Just uh, let me start from there because this is, this is salient, right? Okay. So we had this upheaval with the other way. With the, I, 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 I won't mention his name, but you know he got rid of like like a lot of black women. You know at, at the station, right? And so then they got rid of him, and Sean Simon came in, and he promised he was going to get a new, there was going to be a new program, a new program director, right? And he right. promised that there's going to be a minority, okay? Yeah. He specifically said a minority. Okay. So then, so, so I don't know how it happened, but anyway, I guess he just brought this person in. So so we had this big meeting. It was in what, right across from the main control room, that, that big office there. I guess it was his office at the time, or maybe it was supposed to, you know, it's the new, it was supposed to be the program director's office. Yeah, that's the program director's office. And, you know, that was a pretty big office. So we all had, the room was packed, you know. So he's going to introduce us to the new program there. So he introduced this guy, John Scott, the guy. And, you know, so he's a white guy. So naturally, that's stupid me. Now, now, I'm all the way in the back. I'm by the door. And you know, you know how I'd be, I'd be messing. Uh, let me put this. So I just raised my hand. And said, I said, "Excuse me. Didn't you say that the next person was going to be a minority?" And yeah. they had the bowl and said, "He is a minority. He's homosexual." I fell out, man. <laughs> and be, I think I think just because I said that, I was like the enemy. And that's when you know. So I was. That's when I had a whole year when I was writing these memos and stuff like yeah. that. I was like, whatever. Anyway, so so the let me let me skip to the the important part. Then they, then they brought in a Giselle for the arts department. You know, she was unqualified. They put that guy on the air. You know, they just put him. It was all jacked up. So anyway, uh, the the Democrat now professor was coming up, but they took all their money and they brought in all the the the, the, the public affairs director, the arts director, the Scagliati, the news director, all the people they brought down to the convention. They were paying for them. Pacific was paying for them, right? So I said, let me go down there, you know. Uh, you know, so I jumped on my, I, I used my sister's car, went and visited my best friend's South Jersey, and then I went straight down to, you know, I, I spent some time with my man, uh, John Harris Jr., you know, because he had just moved down to, to Atlanta. So I go there, and I just show up, right? And uh, and so the people, the, the, the Pacifica people, they didn't know, they didn't know the rift between me and everybody else. The Skagley, was, they wasn't saying anything, right? Because they know, you don't know my mouth, you know, whatever. So, I said, so they didn't have nothing for me to do. They said, well, you can get some Vox Pop. You know, they said, let's send this little boy. Away. Go go, go out into the field and get some Vox Pop, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I went and started getting Vox Pop. Now, as you know, I'm a master of Vox Pop. That's, I mean, when I started BAI, I mean, that's what I did for Bernard. Vox Pop, that's my thing, right? I'm yeah. sizing this together. Okay. Now, what happened was, the, I think the first time, what was that? that there was a, some radical sister, whatever have you. So the way I slice it together, you know, the way I do it, it tells a story. Without me, I just answer. I don't even have to ask the question. I make it so the other people answer the question or they ask the question. So I'm, I'm not in it at all, right? And the way it went, it was the, and these things were short. They were like maybe five minutes. And no, they didn't five minutes, like three minutes, four minutes, like that. But they were so good. Boom, 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 boom. And every and every time I come back whenever they said wow and they were like fascinated like they, they said who is this guy you know <laughs> and they kept me sitting around and I would get to places like they had this little encampment they would let no reporters in but because I was Pacifica they said you can come in so I interviewed all the radicals it was like amazing right okay <laughs> so that the way it was I was driving back the last night when they, when uh, Dukakis I guess was accepted this, was going to accept that night. I, I I had to leave, you know what I mean? I was driving back up north. In fact, uh, um, they had um, uh, uh, Robert Knight came. So I drove Robert Knight because he was going to North Carolina to his parents. So I drove Robert Knight on my way back, back, you know, back up to New York. I drove Robert okay. Knight. You know, I met his parents and stuff like that. So, you know, we had a little ride up there. And I had the radio on to listen. Now, what I had done to my last one that I, that I delivered to him before I was leaving 
what happened? I was going through, and and I got this 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 guy talking. I said I, I said I said uh, I said you Latino, right? He said yeah. I said well, can you say that what you just said in 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 Spanish? You know. So he repeated it in Spanish. So I cut the thing together, so that you know we said da, 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 that he delivered his thing in Spanish and it went on like that. But you you got you got the sense of what everybody was saying, right? Okay, fine. I delivered that. Now, up until that point, everything I can there was fine. So I'm so me and Robert are dri- uh, riding up in, in the um, uh, in the car. You know, we got Pacifica on, and I'm listening to the thing. And my segment comes on that I did, and they cut the Spanish thing out. What? They edited my thing. They cut his. They, they cut the Spanish guy out. What? Oh, I was livid because this thing was so beautiful. That's not all. Later on, unbeknownst to anybody, nobody knew this. Later on, when Dukakis did his did his uh, acceptance speech, he did a whole paragraph in Spanish. If they would have played my thing, I foreshadowed what he was doing. Yeah. This is the power of the Sloan, man. I'm telling you, I'm connected. <laughs> I was so pissed. I got there. I called them back. I said, what the blah, 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 blah. They were so embarrassed, okay? Remember, this is 88, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Then what happened in 89 is when we, no, when I got back up. That's right. As soon as I got back up, because that's one of these, uh, that, that's when we, we was doing the thing. That's when I, uh, 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 I was doing some final edits on uh, on the script, right? We was going to yeah. rehearsal, and that's when I went with Bernard up to his little. We had somebody lend him some Catskills place, and I was there. When I said, "Bernard, I got a role for you." That's when he's going to play the preacher, right? No problem, yeah. right? And that's what that's the famous rehearsal because you know I don't do rehearsals. They did one one thing, and Bernard was so flat. Yusef was going like, "Oh, this is not going to work." I can tell Yusef wanted to just take it over, right? And that's yeah. what in the middle of the night Bernard calls me. He says, "Anthony, I got it." And so I said, "Fine, you know, because yeah, I trust that." My thing is like, no, I give I give you the thing. It's your, I did my job. You do your job. That's my whole philosophy on everything. Gets me in right. trouble, but that's just the way it is. So we did that, and it's the first time that people heard because we not like I said, we don't have no rehearsals because it's audio drama, whatever it is. And when Bernard went into that singing preacher, man, you know the thing. Everybody was like, they were in church, man. He had that singing yeah. preacher. He had that southern singing that cadence preacher. It, it just blew everybody away. In fact, it was so it, it, people were possessed. I had to run from the control. That's when I, I think Smooth, as Smooth and Daryl was in the, in the control room with me, I had to run around, give them the control. Ran around the control room, had to hum everybody down. And then, and that, and that was the famous thing where where where, where, where Joe, Joe Masiri, who, who had you know the the binaural uh, mic, you know Fritz, the binaural you know uh, the, the microphone. Uh, he goes he, at the end. He goes, "Amen." You know, he tells the white guy, "It's just so funny." Okay. So so that's done, right? Then that's so that's eighty eight. Then eighty nine, yeah, I went and I went to a conference on audio drama, right? With these big wigs, you know what I mean? Up until then, you know, I've just, I've just been developing audio drama on my own. I have no, you know, I had no nothing with nobody, you know. I had no contact with anybody. All the big time people in the field in audio drama, they had, they had no contact with anybody. Nobody taught me anything like that. I just was a theater person, so I knew what to do. So I go to this conference, but and, and, and Norman Giles, this guy, big, big guy on the West Coast, you know, on our Pacifica station, on uh, excuse me, KPFA. You know, he was a big time thing there. He's you know, big time audio drama, and they, he was known for his like whatever it is. And everybody said, well, you know, you do audio drama like him. So I was part of his workshop, but we were away from the regular. Workshops. I missed all of the stuff because we were it was intense. You know, we put on this thing. It was really great. So the night, the the, the night that we everybody was leaving, the there was a little party. And so this other guy, uh, Tom, whatever his name is, the, another big time radio guy that go all these wins and everything. We had a listening session, and um, the, they had their listening sessions. And I, I didn't have my listening session. I couldn't show them anything, right? And so, but 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 when they had this little party at the end, he was upstairs. It was this, this sort of house upstairs. I said, "Well, you know, I never got to show my my, my thing." He said, "Oh, well, let's hear it." So I put it on, and it was this thing. And the guy said, "Well, that's really good, man. You know, you can get you can get some money for that. You know, you can put in for a, a, an NEA grant. You know, you know, National Endowment for Arts grant." I said, "Yeah." He said, "But too bad, you know, the the, the deadline is like this was like a Sunday or something like that, or, or Saturday." They said the deadline is like Wednesday. I said, "Really? You know." So I went, I went and filled out that sucker money. Did, 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 got that in there. Boom. Went to the NEA. Okay, for to, to get this grant. Unbeknownst to me, one of the people that was at that that was at the uh, I didn't know it at the time, but one of the people 
at the convention that 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 that, that was felt guilty because some it wasn't him that did it, but somebody else cut. Maybe it was him. Who knows? Had had edited my thing out. He sat on the acceptance board for the NEA that year. Yeah. So basically, I got the NEA grant, which was the highest given to an individual at the time. It was like ten thousand dollars, something like that. I forgot what it was. You know, highest for an individual. You know, for that for the, for that year. So I got that grant because they felt so. He felt so guilty. I guess he turned the whole board because nobody knew who I was. They turned the whole board. And they gave me that grant. So I used the post production for that. But then, no. Then I used that money. I used that money I did, to do the post production, put that on right. But then I applied the next year, and I got the money. That's how we did uh, the outsider. That's how I got the money for the outsider. So the whole thing came out because they basically because because uh, well because that's what I just said. So that's the story of, of how the long dream got 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 done. I don't know if we got any money for long, well at least for the post production long dream, and how we had enough money to do. The um the the other thing, but if, well, both both times I got the highest grant possible. But here's the trick: I'll tell you about policy. This is why this is why I'm so, so upset that these people talk about Trump or Biden, and they don't understand Trump. Especially when you go back to this Cube thing. Cube is not talking to Trump. Cube is talking to the president of the United States. People don't get that. Look, I I hate I, I've always hated Daniel Patrick Moynihan. Okay. Senator from New York, but he's the one that did this whole report that that, that destroyed the black family. I won't get to that. Whatever you know, it's just so, so right, right? Yeah, it's that, um, just leave him alone. Anyway, yeah. at the time okay. there was two senators from New York: Al D'Amato, the Republican center, with nobody like. Al D'Amato. Yeah. Oh, you're thinking in the crates now. <laughs> and, and 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 Danny Patrick, those are the two senators. Okay. Now you yeah. know the first the first NEA grant I got. I got a congratulatory letter from Al D'Amato. <laughs> D'Amato. Nothing, but, but this is the trick. <laughs> nothing, nothing from, uh, nothing from Daniel Patrick Moynihan. The second one I got, the second one, you know, the second grant I got, you know, ten thousand dollars. I got from both of them. But but you have to understand, I didn't think of it as I got it from Al D'Amato. I got it from the senator from New York State. Yeah. And the second time I got it from the two senators from New York State. And that's what people can't get in the head. This is not about Trump. You're talking to the president of the United States, you idiots. You're not talking to Trump. It just so happened you you dummies, you, you know, white women let Trump be president. So you, just, well, that's it, you know? So they, yeah. now, now people, we got to get this guy out, this clown out, whatever. Yeah, but another clown's coming in. He never be as clowny, but he's, uh, he's just, he's, like I said, they're corporatists anyway. So my point really is, people don't understand. You're not dealing with individuals. You're dealing with the presidency. You're dealing with senators. You're dealing with the mayor. You may not like the mayor, but he the mayor. If you didn't like him, you should have worked till he don't be the mayor. There's somebody else who should be the mayor, but it's still the mayor or the or the or the what's the guy the the Ways and Means Committee guy that that, that had a hard time. You know what I mean? It's not the guy. He controls the budget. You know. This, this, let me just drive this. I got to drive this home really bad. Okay, here's the problem we're gonna have. Say Biden becomes, you know, president. Okay, fine. I'm not worried about Biden. You know what I mean? I got to do something yeah. tomorrow. You see what I do? It's gonna be. I, I think it's gonna be funny. We'll see what happens. The problem okay. is this: we're gonna we're gonna be ruled by. Here's what I'm gonna say: the hostess, the hoe, and and the um. And and the what's that? And 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 the, and the overseer, the hostess, the hoe, and the overseer, the auctioneer, the hostess, the hoe, and the auctioneer, the hostess, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, she yeah. she holds the power. If the Democrats win, she's really going to have the power. The hoe, that that would be Kamala, whoever her name is, you know, KD, KD Harris, right? Because yeah. she's going to be vice president. But guess what? If it, 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 she, if Biden's out of there, she's the president. Yeah. And like I said, auctioneer would be the Biden guy, but 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 leave him alone. It could be Mnuchin. He'll be, he'll be, he'll be the he's he's the secretary or whatever the, the the treasury or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So if Biden is out of there and say and Harris becomes president, you still control. You know the house is controlled by that 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 nasty woman. You know Nancy Nancy woman, the the the. Uh, <laughs> 
the 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 you know the KD will be in charge and Mnuchin holds and says those are those three people and look at look at the look at the thing how did Mnuchin get there right because yeah. KD pardoned him he should he's behind should have been in jail yeah and why did she pardon because we allowed her to be this the the, the whatever you call it the prosecutor the, the district attorney whatever whatever the hell they did the attorney general other thing these it's the office that matters not the personality yeah. And that's what people don't get. They keep on trying to deal with personalities. Oh, I don't like the way they look. You do. So what? You make fun of the way uh, what's that guy McConnell looks. He looks like a turtle or whatever he looks like. Yeah, but he got more power than your than your than your granddaddy. You know, that's right. he can get your granddaddy yeah. locked up. See, like if, if you if you ever been in the military or like a, a paramilitary like civil service, you understand that that's it's right. the title. That's right. But yeah, they could be dumb as a post, but they got that title. They over you. That's you know? right. <laughs> That's yeah. the, and the funny thing is, since, since I was in paramilitary with Cadet Corps, you know, when I was a kid, and then I was in the Air Force, and that's the whole other thing. That, and that's the other thing. You, there are ways you can do it. When I was in the Air Force, the thing is, people don't understand. I served in the military, but I wasn't doing the bidding of the Air Force. I had the Air Force do my bidding. Yeah. The Air Force actually funded the 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 uh, 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 sickle cell sickle cell testing and lead poison testing for the community. So me being in the Air Force, I made the resources go to the community. <laughs> yeah, there you go, see? I wasn't bombing nobody. I wasn't even saying, well, you know, you understand what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say <laughs> is you got to find a way, if you're a true so-called revolutionary or for the people, well, if you're for the people, like you're going to live, breathe, whatever, and you're going to find every which way to do something for the people. There's something else I almost did, but I'm not going to say because because that was sort of like a real revolutionary. But the point is, that's what I don't get. People say I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna vote for this. I'm gonna do that. There's, there's nothing. What do you do? What are you really doing for the people? That's yeah. not re reactionary. Not yeah, just exactly. blah blah blah. You know. See, I was gonna get into um, if you had said to me um, when we first got on, "Yo, black man, what's up?" And I was gonna say, "Correction, you mean hashtag blame the black man." <laughs> blame the black man. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So we're to blame for all of this stuff. We're blame. We're to blame. Yeah, okay. We're to blame. Yeah, but you know, you know that's interesting. We'll just take that too. You know, everything else. You know, we already taken everything else, so we'll take that too. But that's interesting because people are realizing that now. They keep on blaming yeah. black man. Wait, you know, wait a second. You know, no, that's coming out now too. That's why I say all the stuff is coming to a head. It's it's yes. I, it's wonderful. It's it's a wonderful time to be to be a black man on the planet. That's all I got to oh, say. Oh yeah, definitely. 2020 hey. was pretty good, man. <laughs> you know, hey, like I said, I only talk to black men. I'm, you know, you know, I'm, I'm with everybody. I'm with all the black men. They said, well, what about the women? What about them? And the women got their thing. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You, you, you're the one that got to deal with Kamala. I don't have to deal with Kamala. Not yet. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You, you, you let that boule. You let that boule. That, that, that Brahmin boule in. You deal with her. You know what I mean? I, mean, yeah. I got to deal with the academics, the idiot academics who think that they know so much. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they're going, yeah. oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, please. You know, ah, shut up. You know, you know, Yo, you know. Speaking of which, speaking of which, you know, you had all these people, right? And I, I and I know some of them. They were saying like, oh, you know, it's the optics of Ice Cube meeting with, with the Republicans, blah, blah, blah. So, so then um, I get this image, right? This um video from... um. I don't know. Somebody sent me this this uh, Twitter video from like Kamala's like um yeah uh, niece and stuff yeah uh, like dancing and stuff like it was like a little tribute video right yeah which was cool and stuff like that. So I showed the video. I'm like, now what about the optics of this? She's just like dancing around all the time. Yep. Is that what you know? That's the image that we want to show. Blah blah blah. Oh, but that's cool. Look, look at her rhythm. Blah blah blah. I'm like, so wait a minute. So I said, let's let's go back. And she can't dance. So anymore. Ice Cube is wrong. Because he met with some Republicans, but everybody said he met with Trump, which he did not, right? But I said, but Kamala's cool because she danced. It's worse than that. It's worse than that. So you would rather, you would rather Biden and Bernie talk to Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't even. They wouldn't even. They wouldn't even talk. They wouldn't even talk to to Ice Cube, but they talk to Cardi B. What's yeah, wrong with this exactly. picture? Please yeah. go see that. That's this. This is why I say the truth. The truth. Facts are stubborn things, <laughs> as Samori used yeah. to say. Facts are stubborn things. No matter what you say, you got to deal with that. 
So look, man, you know, people don't want to hear us talking about it's not for people anyway. No, this is for us. This is this is archival purposes only. You know. I'm, I'm glad I get I'm glad I got to tell you the, the true story of what happened with uh, how we got funded, you know what I mean? Because it all came because they were it all came because they was doing a black a black creative man wrong. That's what did it. That's what that's why we got our two big grants. That's why we that's why we got to do an eight and a half hour live audio drama that that broke all kinds of records that that nobody knows about. <laughs> That's it, man. Okay, all right, man. So, uh, like, I'll, I'll call you from. I will we'll, we'll talk from Virginia next, you know. And, All right. and okay. that'll be right. Okay. That'll be right before the. That'll be right before the elections. We'll see what. Right. We'll see what happens this week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, as the world turns. <laughs> All right, man. You take All care. Right. All right. Later. Bye. Right. Bye.